And one of the things we were talking about, David was asking about in an earlier interview, was all that time and weightlessness. You're not used to having to fight gravity again, and everybody kind of has sea legs when they got out of the old uh, uh, capsules. Uh, now, here you're talking about a pilot that just as he comes back into gravity and back into having the force of gravity to work with, he's got to be a highly skilled test pilot. Yeah, that's correct, and that's one of the uh, factors that is a consideration in, in all our minds and a concern mm -hmm. to some on the longer flights that we may fly with orbit. Uh -huh. in, in three days, we don't consider it to be a problem because it is a function of time. You know, right. After spending two and a half days in orbit, I suspect that uh, their sensations on uh, coming back into a 1G field uh, will not be uh, excessive and that they'll reacclimate essentially immediately. Right. Steve, David, I, I'm in New York, if you can hear me. We can. Also with us uh, from Edwards Air Force Base is another, not an astronaut, he's actually, well, he is an astronaut, a mission specialist, Lieutenant Colonel Guy Bluford, and uh, you may have seen him earlier here in this hour on Good Morning America. Uh, Colonel, how are you doing? Can you hear me, Colonel Bluford? Sounds like he's not there yet. Sounds like, uh, yeah, or he just can't hear us or not. David? I imagine. Yes, yeah, who's that, Senator? Yes. Yeah, David, you know, uh, about this adaptation, we right. found when we uh, got into the one... Uh, outer space, the live television pictures coming from the cargo bay door opening in the orbiter. These cargo bay doors have to be closed before the orbiter space shuttle uh, can come back through the Earth's atmosphere. And these pictures, uh, which uh, were live television just about 10 minutes ago, uh, are of the United States, where the orbiter, or the orbiter is in its 34th orbit, and it will land on the 37th orbit. And that's expected to be at about 1.22 this afternoon, Eastern time. David, you're adventurous. Uh, if, if we offered you a chance to go up as a tourist for about uh, $20,000 or $30,000, would you uh, hock your, uh, your home in order to do it? I don't know that I'd hock my home, but I'd sure <laughs> try to scrape it up somewhere, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> Senator, just quickly. What does it feel like to go from 18,000 miles an hour down to 200 miles an hour in a matter of minutes? Is there any sensation to it? Well, of course, when we uh, came in with the Apollo spacecraft, uh, you were basically riding it and brute forcing your way uh, through the atmosphere. And we went up to a peak of seven Gs and then held four, four Gs, four times gravity, for some several minutes uh, before we went into the normal parachute opening sequence. Uh, and uh, it. You adapt uh, fast, but, but because you're prepared for it. You've thought about it. You've done some centrifuge simulations in the past. John Young, of course, has been through it several times before. I, I just don't see how uh, that will be at the uppermost of his mind. He's going to be thinking about landing that uh, spacecraft and doing it safely. Senator Harrison Schmidt and Paul White's here with me in Houston. Thank you very much for joining us for these last television pictures from space before the landing scheduled for later today at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The high final at about 12,000 feet, this is above the ground, and we're doing about 275 knots at 12,000, and we accelerate up to 285 or 290 to pre-flare, which occurs 1,750 feet above the ground. We put the speed brakes in, pull the nose up, 
and uh, land the vehicle at about 185 knots. Sounds to me like you're actually flying the landing as compared to the launch. We do take over the, uh, we do take over the program nominally as it comes through uh, the, at about Mach 0.85 up there, about uh, 37, 40,000 feet. Bob, what are you doing during that whole launch, or that landing sequence, rather? Okay, well, again, once we uh, start hitting, a, hitting the atmosphere, uh, both of us are monitoring the trajectory of the vehicle, uh, making sure that it's behaving properly and uh, making sure that uh, the systems are functioning properly. And again, it's primarily a monitoring job till we get down uh, uh, out of blackout. And at that point in time, we start getting TACAN data we receive, uh, just like airplanes, for navigation purposes, and we'll take a look at that particular data and use it to update our, uh, our navigation state on board, which is like an inertial nav system. And so we look at that data, evaluate it, talk to the ground about it, and uh, go ahead and, and update the system. And shortly thereafter, we'll, we'll get down to about Mach 3.8. We deploy our air data probes, uh, which are similar devices that uh, airplanes have to measure their airspeed. You've got to keep them in prior to that time because it gets too hot. And uh, we look at the air data that we're getting off the probes to make sure it's okay. We'll start utilizing it in the system to fly the airplane. And again, we got some uh, somewhere around that point. John's going to end up turning off the uh, this flash evaporator we turned on going up, so that it, because we're getting down in the atmosphere. And I'm monitoring my instruments, making sure that uh, John's are right. And uh, coming in on the uh, on the landing, I deploy the gear or we back each other up on deploying the landing gear. We're doing that when we're decelerating through about 270 knots and uh, calling out air speeds and altitudes to, to John to make sure that he hits 185 knots or pretty close to it. That's right. What our real job is is to monitor the vehicle and then in case it, uh, you know, that's what they're paying us for. We're supposed to monitor it and follow the guidance until such times as it, it might indicate that it's not doing right and then we're supposed to take over and uh, and fly the vehicle to a safe landing, and that's that's our job. And if the vehicle is working normally and all these sensors are working properly, well, it'll, it'll be a piece of cake. Uh, here's the situation as we stand now. The, uh, the, the critical heating of the spacecraft is due to end in about two minutes. The uh, blackout, the communications blackout, is about to end in something like five minutes, call it. And then uh, we'll have some tracking on the spacecraft and know how it survived that burn through those terrible temperatures. After that'll take us to about 13 minutes from touchdown. And after that, a lot of things will happen very, very fast. Touchdown in about 17 minutes. We'll be back with more coverage of the Columbia's landing after this. We're back at Edwards Air Force Base, the Rogers Dry Lake, the landing strip for the Columbia Shuttle Orbiter, and we are expecting... Your